Welcome everyone to Midday Magazine for this February 2nd, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mayloff here. At 3.30, we're going to welcome in our friend Mary Schultz, talk a little bit about Focus in the Empty Bowls event coming up. Looking forward to that. Right now, in studio. Oh, that feels I good know, to right? say. Yeah, Representative Scott Crew with us. Scott, it's good to have you. Good to see you, sir. It, you know, it's great. I mean, I was in town, brought Jack to school this morning. I'm sitting over at Next Home, and I'm like... Why don't I just come over here? Yeah, I literally yeah. have to go across the bridge instead of sitting in the office. So, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, You know how much we love seeing you. We love having you in studio. Appreciate you. And you look good, man. Looking nice. good, sir. Yeah. I mean, I tell you, you're not going to see anybody walk in the Capitol more than me. So I, <laughs> I tell people all the time is back before I had this weight loss journey, uh, I didn't get around the building as much as mm. I did. But now that I've been out and about, yeah. I, I seem to get in more trouble. Mm -hmm. So I'm in more offices, <laughs> yes, talking to more people, yeah. making more news. You know, it... it it was weird because we had that story that came, that the Rapids Tribune published the story that the Journal Sentinel picked up on and me visiting a Democrat office. I just happened to be walking by. So yeah. I'm like, eh, what the heck? I might as well stop in. And literally, as soon as I opened the door, the whole staff like froze. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, there's what? a Republican here. What should yeah. I do? Oh. Like, oh, uh, okay, that's 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 okay. You did, know. did they spray you with a repellent? Did they? No, I mean, yeah. no, I know, right? Yeah, yes. they just announced that there was somebody different here. I was like. It was, it, it's been interesting this last year because of it. So. We're going to talk about that, and yeah. it's very understandable that you are getting so much movement over there because you are a part of 115,000 committees. So we're, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about the committees you're on as well. Yeah. We were going to talk mm -hmm. redistricting redistrict 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 in the maps. I want to talk uh, a, a number of things with you. Before we do, Scott, um, <clears throat> we haven't gotten to touch on this really yet. 2024, we know this is a big year. We know it's an election year. How uh, uh, How is your outline for 2024? What are your expectations? What are you looking to do this? year well i mean you know my whole goal taking over campaigns and elections this cycle is just making sure that 2024 was not another 2020 mm -hmm. that's plain and simple that's yeah. all i want i don't have huge expectations i didn't split government we're going to make massive changes or solve all the problems i mean i get it i mean there's small things that we can do but there's also some big things that we can do so that's what we chomped on this session is what is the big thing that we can agree on that we can get done and that was that early processing absentee ballots. So we've got that through the assembly on a voice vote. We're waiting for Senate action. The governor said he'll sign it. And what it'll do, basically, give everybody a chance when you go to bed on election night to know who won the election. Mm -hmm. Instead of maybe waking up the next morning and somebody else took the lead overnight where you can start yelling and screaming that fraud happened. Right. It is literally, and I, I've said it a couple times before, it's 95% of the problem is perception. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to fix that perception and turn reality into... You won or you lost on election night. You can go through your seven stages of grief the next day at work instead of worrying about it for a week after the election. I just want the results in. That's all I care about right now. The rest of it is minutia as far as I'm concerned. As long as we know that night who won, we can all manage. So. How, um, how are, are you and your colleagues working to make sure that happens? That, like, I, like I started, it's the relationship building. It's a relationship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just getting to know people, getting to hang out, getting to talk to each other. I mean, the ranking Democrat in my committee, Lee Snodgrass from the Appleton area, she and I text every day. Mm -hmm. And 90% of it is not about the Capitol. Yeah, yeah. It's about each other. And yeah. it's about what we're doing. And, what, you know, I was calling bingo the other night and... Somebody brought me a copy of the Rapids paper and had a picture of her in it, so I sent her a snapshot yeah. of it. <laughs> and she sent me a picture of her playing cribbage at home. I'm nice. like, it is just, it's people talking to people. Yeah. I mean, and it just, you know, I boil it back to, you know, all the things I've learned from when Tommy Thompson was governor uh, and how the world operated politically back then. Mm -hmm. And just being old school. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. It, it works, right? So we've built this huge relationship. We've got a great reputation. The entire state's watching our committee to be the guide for leadership for the rest of the political process in the state. Mm -hmm. And I think we set this new way forward that once we get past all this stuff about maps and we get past the 24 election, 25, 26, 27 and beyond looks a lot calmer yeah. because the relationships we're building with each mm -hmm. other. Uh, it also seems like some of the... Some of the people that uh, kind of went and and turned politics in a different direction are are not going to be there. 
Right. It, yeah. it seems like some of that is is, and I don't mean to put this in a cruel way or anything like that, because I, I'm not a uh, necessarily looking to. I'm not, I don't know. I don't look at any politician as evil necessarily. So I don't like to, and I don't know ninety percent of politicians. I just yeah. know what they vote for or what their vote, what they stand on in these things. Um, but it does look like some of that divisiveness is getting out of uh, our committees and um, in politics in general as well. It is. I mean, that's the flip side of the coin. Is I want to set the relationship, set the standards, set the practice, and how we're going to operate. And part of that is taking the oxygen away from the people that shouldn't have the oxygen to yell about. Right. Right. I'm like, if you don't have this problem anymore, then you have nothing to yell at me for. So Mm. it's just problem solving because of the relationship building. And it's gotten a lot better. Honestly, this whole session uh, from the folks that we call the more enthusiastic people out there (laughs) who are on board coming to testify at our committee meetings now because they know that we're listening. Yeah. You know, I get where they're coming from. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I get it. But I can show you this, this, and this. And yes, you're right. There's where this part doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Let's fix that part. Yeah. So it is this, this collaborative effort from those who we shut out a little bit more last session, hoping they would go away, mm-hmm. knowing they're not going to. Yeah. But at the same time, just being the change that we need to be and monitoring it, controlling it, and you know, broadcasting it mm-hmm. is the other end of it. Yeah. Just getting the message out that you know there is a way that we can get through this stuff without tearing each other's throats out and playing Mortal Kombat every day. Right, so. yeah, yeah. When it comes to uh, the elections, we understand that a lot of this is done by volunteers. A lot of it is done by, you know, people taking time out of their own day to do this. Are we going to be able to help with that process as far as getting results quicker and making sure we have more poll workers, more people that are there, uh, more security for poll workers, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's another bill that we worked on this session, too, is making sure that we really beefed up all the protections for election workers, mm-hmm. make sure that there, if there are the need for whistleblowers to you know, call out bad clerks in parts of the state that they're mm-hmm. protected, that yeah. they feel they can have a voice. Uh, so that was a part of the process, another bipartisan bill that will get signed and through both houses of the legislature, and uh, that just comes from communication and letting yeah. those people know we value you. We don't have a system if you're not there. Mm-hmm. So to let you be there, we have to make sure you're protected and feel safe and non-threatened and all of those types of things that mm-hmm. – we usually don't talk about as state leaders because it's a local issue, but yeah. we've got to take the lead and just let everybody know that, hey, somebody's got your back, and yeah. that's what we're doing. So I just, you know, I, you know, like even sitting here on the table looking at this, hmm. you've, got, you've got this this sign on your table that says, be the change you wish to see in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, you, you can't say it any better than that. It, yep. It's just, it's the way it, it's, you know, the, in the beginning of my legislative career, I, I probably saw things differently. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it was easier to see things differently. Mm -hmm. But even the story of, you know, trying to get the entire state to agree on maps in the last two weeks has been an amazing story about, you know, I saw a need, filled a need, almost got the entirety of the Democrats and the the Republicans in the Assembly and the Senate and the governor to all agree on a legislative map, Mm -hmm. which is the white unicorn. Yes. We missed it by... A few votes here. I was curious. I mean, it was very close. It was it was so close. We Mm. we talked to everybody individually in their offices. Like, what does this version look like to you? What does this look like to you? And we all kind of came to a consensus that, you know, if if we had to pick something legislatively, there is a least objectionable way, and that actually ended up being the governor's proposed map. Mm. (laughs) So, seeing as a practical solution and a political solution, saying, hey, you know what? We're the legislature. If Mm -hmm. we take that proposal, pass it as a bill. How is the governor going to veto his own map? Right, right. I mean, that's the assumption. It's like mm-hmm. that's the one you turned in. That's the one we're gonna we're gonna operate off. Yeah. So we've we spent, God, I can't even remember. It was four straight days going to everybody's offices individually. Okay, what do you think about this? Can you tell me? Did you look at it? Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think the reason we didn't get to a solution legislatively because we had too many legislators who just didn't even look at it. Yeah. Just assume that somebody was going to tell them. That's the impression what, I got. Just assume that everybody was just going to tell them what was going to be and that they were okay with it. I'm like, well, well okay, can you guys just maybe take a look for five minutes and get back to me and let me know? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> real quick, there are two things I want to touch on. Sure. One, yeah. you are very good at, at what you do politically. I also think you're a bad politician because you're too I, honest. I am awful. You're too awful. real. Yeah, you're, right. you're giving us way too much of the behind the curtain yeah, and all right, that. Yeah. I love you for it and I appreciate it, man. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and never change. Please, never yeah. change. But uh, at, as speaking of change, you've done something a couple of times with me that we don't hear all the politicians do. I started this way and I evolved. I grew. I My mind changed. I got more information. 
information. We need more of that. So I really, really appreciate that out of you, Scott. Now we'll yeah. never normalize those things. Yeah. We need more of that. Um, can we, when we look at the map re redistricting in this conversation that's going on, is there an agreement with you and your colleagues that the maps as they are right now aren't going to work? Hmm. Yes. So just judging off of the votes that we took mm -hmm. in the Assembly and the Senate last week, yeah. where I've got the entirety of the State Senate, the entirety of the State Assembly to take a vote to say, okay, this is the version we're going to operate off of, which was the governor's map minus five line tweaks because on the governor's map you literally saw where they drew houses out of districts right where there was a state rep in the nina Manasha area they drew him 15 feet out of his district mm. don't tell me you didn't look at his house if i'm going to yeah. be over here being honest i'm going to call yeah. you guys out on being honest sure. too yeah. you drew him out of his district because mm. it made sense for you mm. move that line Pat Snyder in Wassa, another mm. great guy huge relationships with the Wassa community the Monk community all throughout the city of Wassa. They drew him six blocks out of the district he represents. Mm. Okay, I'll take your map, Governor. I will pitch your map to the entire legislature, Governor. But you did some things you shouldn't do, too. Let's mm -hmm. put those people back. Let's make it a 50-50 district, just like all of those seats would have still been, and not make people have to move just mm -hmm. to represent the people they already represented. So we gave the governor 99.79% of what he wanted, and he vetoed it because mm -hmm. it wasn't 100%. Like, okay, that's your prerogative. I get it. But it's still going to tell that story, right? Because yeah. now what that does is it kicks it to the courts. And last night, the courts and their consultants that they hired basically said, everything Republican is bad. Everything Democrat, we'll keep considering. It adds fuel to the fire that I've been trying to put out for the last nine months. Like, right. if you're going to go to consultants, then at least have both options on the table, Republican, Democrat. I have no illusions that the court is going to pick a Republican map. I get it. I'm a realist. I, I, it's not going to happen. My whole point in all of the things I'm doing this session is maintaining the checks and balances and the powers of the government. It is the legislature and the governor should pass bills, sign them into law. The court should interpret the law. The court should not be creating their own map, creating laws, and then telling the legislature and the governor, too bad, so sad. Mm -hmm. It is literally the way our government was set up, is that mm -hmm. you know, you've got three branches of government. Whichever two agree with each other are going to win. Well, if I'm the one that is not on the right side of the political aisle right now, I'm going to have to work with the other two mm -hmm. and at least find one that's going to agree with me. The most likely to do that would be passing a bill that the Democrats and the, and the legislature agree with that the governor would sign. That would maintain legislative authority over so many things. Like the court itself said in the ruling is that the legislature maintains the authority to draw the map. That's what we should do. Mm -hmm. And if we have to accept one that we don't like, Fine, but we still have to protect our institution and hold that authority to pass the map. So if it's the straight-up governor's map and the governor signs his map, which I don't think he would at this point anyways, why mm. would he sign his own map that he submitted when he saw that there are others that are probably more beneficial that the court's going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, you know, that was, that was my effort, is I was not going to sit back and just watch the courts do this when we have a job to do, yeah. whatever the outcome was. I didn't care what the outcome was. It's just that we have a job that we're sent there to do. I've heard um, some some similar things uh, years ago when the Republican maps were first come out. Sure. And, yeah. and and we heard about the, the some of the situations there. And I can remember uh, maybe 10 years before that, a similar story. A, about every, yeah, every 10 <clears throat> years you're going to so, hit. I feel like this is something that uh, whenever this topic comes up, one of the things that I notice from our listeners, from people that I talk to in the community, is it doesn't feel like this subject is understood well enough. Yeah, so right. you and I could spend the next 20 minutes going back and forth about the mapping and some of the things that you've discussed and we've heard discussed in the news. I think that's all well documented. Yeah, I don't right. feel like we're wasting the next 20 minutes repeating some things that you've already said and I've already said or the, has already been said in the news. What I'd like to talk about is what redistricting is yeah. and how often this happens yeah. and what uh, who makes these decisions because i don't feel like that is common knowledge and and needs Perfect. to be known yeah, enough great. So, so yeah i mean literally the the 101 on this is redistricting happens after every census so once a decade theoretically it's only supposed to happen once a decade, theoretically right? yes, yes yes so we're in the 2020s <clears throat> and this will be the third map that we've used in the 2020s yeah. once it gets passed yeah. that's how bad it's getting politically right. is that this should not be a political Problem. This should be a once a decade thing that is done. And in in 2011, 
That was the only time in the last 50 years that there was a legislative map signed into law by the governor. Otherwise, every 10 years we go through this argument and the court of one sort or another, federal or state, end up creating a map. Our state constitution is very clear that every 10 years there's a redraw. Every session we run on those maps, it's done once every 10 years. And that those districts have to be drawn to be contiguous and compact. That is all the Constitution says about it, mm-hmm. right? And that it's the legislature's job to do this. So that was part of what we dealt with this past week, too, was telling, you know, even the governor, like, hey, you know, I know we tweaked your map. It's only 99.79% of what you want, but your chance to have us pass a bill to do this limits us from doing it again until mm-hmm. 2031. Say, for example, next year we have another Supreme Court race and the Supreme Court flips again. Are we going to go back and draw maps again? Mm, mm-hmm. Right? Now now is probably likely because yeah. if the Supreme Court institutes a map and the court flips, we're probably going to have to go back and draw maps again mm. because the new court's going to come up with another reason to draw maps. Whereas if we have a legislative solution that's signed into law by a governor, we can only do it once every 10 years. Right. Plain and simple. The way that that's, we had planned on doing this, the way it, it was supposed it's to be. It's locked in. Mm. So we even went a step further this year and said, you know what? You've been talking governor for the last you know, six, seven years about just doing a straight up nonpartisan redistricting plan through the legislative service agencies. Fine. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's attach it on to, let's just sign your map into law, add the nonpartisan redistricting onto it, call it good. We don't ever have to do this again, ever. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. You know, well, I and I, 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 we're, I, I wanted to stick with uh, just a, what it is. Redi- we're yeah, getting right. a little off topic, but I will say that I, I we, we see this every political cycle, no matter what level it is. Uh, I'm sure that Governor Evers and his team will be saying that they're just trying to correct what was done in the previous regime, sure, and yeah, the next right. regime will say that about Governor Evers. So, I mean, as, as far as that part of but it yeah, goes. Yeah, once every 10 years, based on population growth and change in the state of Wisconsin, those populations grow more currently and you know, the... The west side of the state is the St. Croix County area outside of Minneapolis, where folks are moving in a little bit more. Uh, the pressure growth in Wisconsin is more on the east side, where you see Fox Valley, Appleton, Green Bay growing more. So that's what draws those districts districts wider or taller. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's basically have to, you have to be equal in population between all 99 assembly districts and 33 senate districts. Have to be contiguous in nature. Can't have any. You have to jump in and out like right. you've seen illinois maps <laughs> yes yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i mean that's what it is basically it's it's every 10 years based on population is what we're supposed to reapportion the voters who proposes these maps so the way that the process is meant to work under the constitution is that the legislature creates a bill that goes to the votes in both the chambers signed by the governor mm-hmm. so every map gets started by the legislature mm-hmm. and usually we use our uh, internal map drawers with our own caucuses mm-hmm. to decide what they want to do and whichever party's in power will vote. If the majority has the votes, they're going to vote the way they vote. Uh, so that was why the push for a, and I've said it for years, a nonpartisan entity to draw maps has been a preference for folks for a long time, but I, I've been in Madison long enough to know that there is nobody in Madison who is nonpartisan. Yeah, yeah. So that's always been my argument against mm-hmm. it. It's like, okay, it just it doesn't exist. It sounds we all good have on our paper, part, right? But it, it, yeah, to be real with everybody who's listening, we all know we have a preference one way or another. I mean, there are so many independent voters. Mm-hmm. They still have preferences, and nobody sure. is nonpartisan. So, uh, having going forward uh, and and trying to keep this back to the whole ten years, st- you know, and right. everything. Do you think that uh, there are way- processes we could do to correct that, as far as having a committee of of uh, multiple Democrats, Republicans, all of the above, pulling up, maybe ma- mapping these things out? Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I took that role on as the chair of campaigns and elections. Right. I mean, that is legislatively where a bill should go would be the campaign and elections committee because mm-hmm. that's the name of my camp. That's my that's the name of my committee. It's kind of your job. It's elections, yeah. right? So we never saw a bill come to our committee. So I said, mm-hmm. you know what? That's ridiculous. Let me just go do this myself. Mm-hmm. So that's where I went to every single office in the Capitol and on all my walks and talking to everybody individually and found out that most people were just kind of sitting there waiting to see what would happen. I'm like. Mm-hmm. Huh. So it just it's opened up a whole new avenue of my job and kind of made it a little more fulfilling in the end to know that there is more of the mission that I started on to finish is trying to help everybody understand what their actual role in this process is. And hopefully by the time we get to 2031 and proposals come out, legislators will be prepared to talk about their 
potential maps and the partisan split of it and if it divides their communities of similar interests and mm -hmm. just to have them learn about it through this process has been fulfilling to know that in 2030 they're going to know more about it at least. yes yeah and and that's part of our all of our jobs right. uh, you know yeah. sharing information keeping information refresh fresh and and in people's minds and going forward um, Scott, I, I do want to, we're running out of time. Yeah, uh, I did want to let people know that uh, you can hear more about uh, Scott and more of the things that he is doing in Madison on his e-update. You've been doing this for a little while, and I really like what you're doing there with that, where it's uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a newsletter sort of thing with yeah. a bunch of uh, what you've been up to that day, that week. Yeah. Uh, I want to encourage people to find out your, find your Facebook page, check out that e-update. It's a great way to hear much more about, uh, in depth about what Scott is up to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to the committee work, um, Encourage uh, encourage people to look into that more too. You are on so many different committees. Um, is there anything that you got going on this week or coming up that you wanted to touch on? Yeah, I mean we're building off of a five hundred and fifty million dollar housing and real estate investment that we made in the state budget and creating programs for you know communities like Wisconsin Rapids that have more available housing for middle income and lower income people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even get talked about. Yeah, right, because yeah. there's so much auction getting eaten up by campaigns and elections and maps and all this. I other wanted stuff. to talk about it today. If we were I know, able to. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm on the local government committee. We had yeah. a, a generational change in how shared revenue works. It brings yeah, more money yeah. back for our communities for roads and and for police and fire and EMS services. I mm -hmm. mean, when people talk about how contentious Madison is, this has been the most favorable session that we've ever had on agreeing on major major initiatives, mm -hmm. and it all gets eaten up because of all of these. Other things, yeah, that, yeah. Get, that really don't matter in the end. Like it really doesn't matter what map I'm going to run on. I don't care. Mm, mm. I, I just need to know. So if I have to tell my wife I have to move, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> that, that's all legislators are looking at. It's like yeah. I, I get it. I'm going to run, but I just want to know if I have to tell my wife yeah. that we got some bad news, right? So I mean, the, and the e update will describe. I mean, all of those things that are coming up. We've got a lot of local bills. We just did one for it. Uh, $150 million project that's going to be coming up in Stevens Point for a, a potato company to come process mm -hmm. 18,000 acres of potatoes and to frozen food products. It's a I mean, big opportunity. Just testified that yesterday. Yeah. And yeah. even I forget about it because of all this other stuff. Well, there's so, so much. Yeah. It's, it's It's been an incredibly successful session. Mm. Incredibly successful. Mm. And at the end of it, for having maps and elections take up all the noise is a little unfortunate sometimes, but... It is what it is. You can uh, ask Scott your own questions. You can find out uh, things from Scott yourself. Scott, how can they get in touch with you if they want to? Cell phone. I yeah. mean, usually when we do this, you record the morning and oh, play yeah, it later yeah, type of yeah, thing. Yeah. I get yeah. a lot of phone calls about 3.30. <laughs> so 715-323-3290. Uh, yeah. yeah. Appreciate the time as always, sir. Uh, again, uh, Steve travels out there. And thanks so much for joining us in studio today. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you soon. We'll be back with more Midday Magazine coming up right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR, locally grown radio.